What's up, Apple Biters? I'm Brian Tong, and welcome to the show. There were a ton of announcements from WWDC, and try saying that five times fast, because I know you can't. And most of you probably know all about them, but we'll do a little recap for those of you with actual lives that don't revolve around Apple technology. So I'll give you my thoughts and drop some more tidbits on you. The big news, obviously, is the iPhone 3GS is here. The fastest, most powerful iPhone yet. It's packing about twice the speed with a faster processor, twice the RAM, the ability to connect to AT&T's upgraded 7.2 megabits per second network later this year, the improved 3 megapixel camera with video capture and editing features, and up to 32 gigs of capacity. So really, all you have to do is watch last week's show because that's what we called out. Now, it will also include a digital compass, and cosmetically, there is nothing different about it at all. Not even like a little S logo. The 3GS will be available on June 19th and start at $199 for the 16 gig and $299 for the 32 gig model. The original iPhone 3G is still sticking around and it will be priced at $99. Now, a feature that wasn't showcased is a new surface on the iPhone 3GS that is fingerprint resistant. Apple calls it the oleophobic coating and it almost sounds like an Apple made up word because they've done that before. So I looked it up and basically it means lacking the attraction to oil or oil fearing. I don't think I've ever said oil fearing before in my entire life, but I'll put it to the test soon enough because I love Kentucky Fried Chicken and I'll let you know if that new iPhone is an oleophobe. Unfortunately, those of you who want to upgrade from a 3G to a 3GS will have to wait if you want the entry level pricing. AT&T subsidizes the cost of the phone when you sign up for the two year contract, but we've only had our phones for about a year so if I want to get the new 3GS right now, I would be paying $399 for the 16 gig or $499 for the 32 gig model. Now this type of policy has always been in place by phone carriers and AT&T gave us a pass when upgrading the original iPhone to the iPhone 3G, but this time around, it's a no-go. So I'll just have to wait it out until December 12th. Some of you might have to wait even later and for all you people that are jumping to the iPhone and getting the entry pricing, I hate you. Hate you. Now, we have more WWDC goodies. The iPhone 3.0 software update is coming June 17th. It's free for all iPhone users and a $9.95 upgrade for iPod Touch users. So Apple showcased a few more details we haven't seen, but Find My iPhone was the rock star of them all. It allows users with a mobile me account to locate their phone if it's been lost the Apple way. This alert sound plays whether or not you left it in silent mode. You can even wipe the data on it remotely with the click of a mouse, so pony up 99 bucks a year because it could save your iPhone. Or just keep it glued to your body. I like to put mine between my body and my underwear waistband. Safe and sound. Apple also announced that MMS would be available by 29 of their carrier partners on launch day, but for AT&T in the US, we get it later this summer. Are you kidding me? That's a feature that my mom's five-year-old Razor can do. It's still a joke and bad apple on you, AT&T, but if later this summer means a few weeks after launch, then, you know, I'll gladly take it back. Now, tethering your phone to your computer will have 22 carriers worldwide supporting it on launch, but for AT&T users? In 42 countries around the world, they will support this at the launch of iPhone OS 3.0, and more will be rolling out later. Ooh. Well, uh, I'm not a big tethering kind of guy, so I'll hold off on the bad apple for now and just let you guys throw them instead. So the new iPhone 3GS, yeah, it has a few cool new features, but it's all about the software update, and getting the new iPhone isn't really that big of a deal to upgrade right now for me. Now, the hardware that no one saw coming was the revamped MacBook Pro line. The 13-inch unibody joins the Pro family, and since Steve was tired of hearing my bitchin', Firewire 800 is back and it's on the 13 inch. Thank you, Steve. Your fruit basket is on its way. Ooh. Now the 13 and 15 inchers get a speed bump, the new built-in battery for better performance, an improved display, and the express card slot has been replaced with an SD card slot to connect your camera media cards. Entry level prices were cut by about $300 across the board, so it's a great time to get one, especially with the back to school promo. And finally, we got the first public preview of Mac OS X Leopard, which will only be compatible with Intel-based Macs. Snow Leopard will be available for all Intel Macintoshes, past and present. 
I love how that man says leopard. Mm. Now, they're pretty much saying goodbye to the PowerPC-based Macs, but overall, it's a lighter, faster, and optimized OS. They showcase moving content from one app and using the new Dock Expose feature to seamlessly move it to another app, which the crowd loved. The new QuickTime allows you to edit and upload clips directly from QuickTime, and there was some really, dare I say, sexy Microsoft Exchange integration with Snow Leopard. I'm not kidding. Now, it will be available in September, and the price point to upgrade, 29 bucks. I was there, and that reaction was like an Oprah free stuff giveaway. if you're a developer. All right, guys, there are plenty of other things that we could talk about, but we'll just have to wait until next week. So tell us what you think about all things WWDC, the new iPhone 3GS, and send them to the Apple Byte at CNET.com. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching, and come back next time for another Bite of the Apple. Hi, I'm Molly Wood, host of the CNET Mailbag Show. It's the show where we read all of your email from the ridiculous to the sublime, and we especially like the hater mail. Really. See it in high def at cnet.com slash mailbag.